Welcome everyone to another episode of Biz Talk Africa. Really exciting today. We have uh, we have our guest John Kamara, who is the founder of uh, of Ada Lab, and we're really excited to have him today. I'm Jason Schuster, our host uh, and VP of uh, Business Development here at Biz Te- at Biz Tech, and of course my wonderful co-host Videa Mike, founder of Questa Solutions. Really glad to have you, Vidi. And really glad to have you, John. Thanks for being here today. No, thank you very much, guys. I'm really excited to be here today. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And John, we're 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 having a, a really interesting topic today. It's a topic that I've been wanting to talk about for a while, but it's about uh, is Africa becoming a tech hub? But before we dive into that, could you take maybe two or three minutes to just introduce yourself to the audience, tell them a little bit about your background so that they kind of understand where your perspective is coming from, and maybe a little bit about what you guys are doing over at Ada Labs. Okay, thank you very much. So my name is John Kamar. I'm the founder uh, and inspiration director for Ada Labs Africa. Uh, my background is in technology. I grew up in Dublin in Ireland, uh, and I moved back to Africa about uh, seven years ago to get involved in the tech scene and um, build new startups. Uh, so basically, Edelab is a, a fusion incubator, the first of its type uh, in this continent. And what we've done is we've taken the models of a, a bootcamp, a Y Combinator, an accelerator, and all these, and we fuse it together to the first 12 month program where we actually incubate, develop, and do venture build for startups over 12 months. So zero to six months, we help get the product ready and six to 12 months, make them commercially viable, give them enough time to grow the business and also then be able to push the business opportunity across the continent and also help scale companies across the continent to what we call borderless um, scalability. Um, so, and, and the other part is we also train smart technology. Part of my interest, uh, uh, enthusiastic background is in machine learning and blockchain. So we also build the first AI center of excellence in Nairobi. And our goal is to train 6,000 AI engineers over the next four years in this, uh, in 10 countries across the continent, and also 2,000 blockchain developers across the continent as well by 2025. So we have those very strategic goals that also means we can continue to add to the startup ecosystem, but also create employment opportunities for people who are not necessarily gonna become uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, we started in January, uh, February, last year with one company right now we have about 10 companies in the lab and we're full markets and we probably need to pick 50 companies uh, end of this year wow, wow. <laughs> that that is amazing and i have to say john that's prob- probably one of the fastest most informative in- introduction we've ever had you covered it's so true. much ground you covered the past what's happening now and the future and it's like uh, Five minutes in, we love that. Oh, yeah. Now, <laughs> we, you know, just by that introduction, we see how you work, right? Your entire like um, stack, we like it. How has it been? I mean, like you started with one, you're now at ten, you're gonna have fifty. Um, that's that's quite a journey. So it means yeah, that, it, you know, people are hungry for this, right? No, people. I mean, because the thing is also, I I, I grew a startup in Ireland in the past, so I know how difficult it was. But then there were so many investors in Europe, but country in Africa where you have, you know, one investor to fight three, four hundred startups. So you actually see that most of the money that come into Africa comes from Europe or America, because that's where the money is, even the small African VC. So if you look at that and you look at the amount of startups that fail, even after getting seed funding, uh, it, it is almost a 0.75% success rate for them to actually get, even with the great the crave of startups here. So our goal is to say, how can we make our startups scalable? How can we make them better? And how can we deploy the camel theory, which is the thesis that I decided that, look, if you look at the way Africa works, um, we're not worried about unicorns. The end goal is to create an industrial enterprise that creates jobs and allows us to participate in smart economies. So from that perspective, can Beautiful. I grow companies, companies that are like camels? And why camels? Camels are animals that live in the desert and they survive on very little, very, very little. And they still ferry people and goods and services across which means they still provide value. 
They still will create jobs. They still will create SME opportunities with very little. So they learn how to be sustainable and commercially and survive. with very little. Yes. So that is my, my camel theory that I put out last year, <laughs> that this is how I would like to build business. More camels, less unicorns. You see, if I build a thousand camels, I can create a million jobs. You, you, you sort of speak indirectly to my heart here because when, you know, it's not about money. It's about the ecosystem. Startups fail because they can't get business. They can't market their business. The product is one element of it. Money is one element of it. But the fact that you guys are having, you know, creating these soft landings, you have the environment in which you can help them scale and become borderless. And, you know, sort of like that, that um, mentoring, but also y- y- startups suffer with um, hypnotizing themselves of success. It's not about a unicorn. You're absolutely right. It is about creating a sustainable life and an ecosystem where everybody could work together. And that is what builds economies. Economies are not, you don't win a football match with one key player. Everyone has to play together or, or, or soccer for the Americans. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what we try to do in the same way when we look at the smart technology era. Um, also, for me, I think that, yes, we as Africa, we have, you know, fundamental problems of people have to eat, agriculture, all those things, true. And we must solve those problems. But one of the things that we create a lot is data which is why I'm very interested in machine learning and I build the AI center of excellence. That okay, how can we use the power of data to reshape our future if we don't have all those infrastructure? So if we don't get involved in smart and deep tech, and, and, and we have a lot of young people who are smarter, they might see graduates, it's just they don't have the resources or the infrastructure. So if we can build R&D centers that are also focused on smart and deep technology, we can also generate a lot of foreign direct investment into the continent nice. and have my young kid sit here and he doesn't have to migrate across the desert to go to Malta, to go to Germany, to go to Italy. Why? So this is also why capacity development to a sustainable outcome of job creation and also it's very important also to Ada Lab. So, so Ada Lab really is an idea. It's a movement. Like, you know, like Caesar said, Rome is an idea, an idea that is carried in the heart of every man and woman. Edelab is an idea that is carried in the heart of every young person who comes in contact with what we're trying to do. Either you become an entrepreneur or we skill you to have the opportunity to actually go create your own future. The idea will burn through a million young people that I want to transform their lives in this country. And what does it mean? What does the name mean? Ada Lab. Ada is, an, Ada is the name of the first female software developer. Actually. Yes. Ada Love Less. So we're also All very right. biased to female developers. We, we are intentionally developing female tech entrepreneurs. We like that. Oh, sorry, we. I like that, Jason. I think I'm, I'm all for that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it too, honestly. Um, yeah, it's, that's really, really cool. I, I, I think that there's... Obviously, in the, in the last few years, there's been a, a bigger push um, to to help create more female founders, female tech entrepreneurs, but not not everywhere. So, seeing it coming out of a place, you know, out of uh, out of something like Ada Lab is fantastic. I love it. I really do. So, but yeah, probably maybe not as much as Vidi, but <laughs> she's she's a little biased too, right? <laughs> love it. Love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> So, okay, gosh, you're doing some really cool I mean, things. I think uh, we, we have a, yeah, go on. No, I was just saying well, you, I mean, you guys we are have doing a, really cool things. So, yeah, go, keep going. <laughs> no, we, we have our AI Center of Excellence that we built here. And uh, I remember in 2019 when I was telling folks that, you know, I think we should develop, invest in develop AI engineers or data scientists who can turn into junior engineers because the market economy for AI driven startups or even AI outsourcing opportunities is humongous. And if we don't participate, we just become consumers and our data will be used for things that we actually, and obviously nobody believed me, 
up until late last year, um, FSD Kenya, which is financial service dipping, they decided that, you know, well, we're going to take a chance with you and we're going to fund the first AI engineer. So between November and included, we partnered with AI Commons. Uh, between November and now, we're graduating the first 35 AI engineers from our course. Nice. Come from. So, so again, it's not about saying what you're going to do, even if you don't. So I live the camel theory. I don't worry about how much money I don't have. I find the right partnership. Sometimes reputational wealth also goes farther than just money because you might not have the money to say, I can't do this, but there's always a way and it might take longer time, which is fair enough. You know, it might take somebody in Europe shorter to do something. It take me longer to do here, but because I, I grew up in Europe, so I understand. Um, but applying that part process, the growth, the, looking at success is this parameter. So I look at technology success in Africa from my own parameters. I don't get, I don't like let anybody else judge what success means for me. And success means for me, how do I build jobs for young people in this continent? So let me be a little bit controversial here yes. because Jason didn't do his normal, um, you know, disclaimer that. You know, video is going to ask some questions way off here. So I'll, 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 let me jump right into this, okay? Controversial. <laughs> <clears throat> I like what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. AI itself, right? Um, what, what, what data and how is data being collected right now? So we know that not everybody is going to have smart devices. Um, we know there are, there are challenges in terms of having connectivity and stuff like that. You, you have all of those things. Um, are you billing, John, for Africa or are you an export product for the rest of the world as well? Do you see the Oasis for, these, for, for the, your camel theory being an export service to the rest of the world because Africa has such a young population and the skills that you are cultivating right now could be qu quite a fascinating thing because the rest of the world also, you know, everybody's in data science, trying to understand data, data analytics and all this sort of stuff. Um, but actually having a focused uh, training on a group of people who could do this, is it your view to be able to export? Are you creating that, you know, that, that service layer? And are you, am I asking you your strategy and you're going to be like, sorry, Vidya, I can't tell you this because it's confidential. <laughs> oh. John, did we lose you? This is... So, the question... Oh, this is the We look right. at the outcome. What are the outcomes? No, can you hear me? We're, Hello? We're, we're struggling a little bit, John, I'm afraid. Yeah, can you hear me? We can hear you okay. now. Your video is frozen. Can you hear me? Perfect. I can hear you again. There you go. Okay. Sorry about that. No, I'm saying the, 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 what do you, I always think about is what is my end outcome? What outcome do I want for anything that I do? The outcome is job creation. The outcome is to create smart SMEs. And the outcome is to transform the lives of the young people in this continent. So let's work our way back from there. So we're training them in smart technology. How do we achieve this outcome if that is the outcome? So one, some of these kids will be able to sit here and we provide talent services to the global market. That's one outcome. Two, we'll be able to build startups that can also create jobs because they're in that same smart technology space. That's another outcome. And the third part is we're now able to be owners and curators of our own data in our own ecosystem. And part of the models of the training is ethical AI when you're building applications. So we're also training these young people who are gonna be the collectors of so much data locally, the value of ethical and non-biased AI. The biased nature of what you create is what is going to do at a later stage. So these are all the, also, the, the, your question is actually not controversial, it's actually quite accurate. The idea is to do all of the above, but make sure that we are now the owners of our own data. We control the infrastructure of our data and we control how our, basically we have sovereign rights of ownership to our data. Absolutely. And we make everything to do. 
a, a value proposition so that even if you want to trade your data for wealth, then it's your own right because you now understand the value of that data and that data is protected by another young person who's created an application that is working and is not working for some person to come buy that data off him because that he now understands the ethical and biased nature of what he's doing if he doesn't do it right from the one. So, so all those things are part of why we are doing what we're doing. That is a very, very powerful statement, right? Because you, you find that companies utilize data right now to sort of manipulate minds and drive demand. Whereas when you own your data and you know the trust you have associated with it and how you want to use that data, you, it's back to demand and supply. This is what we as consumers want and this is what will be supply. Rather than letting sort of um, preferences and other, other things sort of drive demand. Have we lost, John? We've lost video. Yeah, I think we might have lost him again. John, are you there? No, I'm here. Oh, good. Okay, okay. there he is. <laughs> Keep going, John, buddy. I think you need to add on your radar a 5G um, a, a fiber yeah. project. I, I, am on, I am working on it vigorously. <laughs> you have our support. You have our support. We had power cuts in Senegal. We had latency in, um, in a farm. So we are all for it. Join us in. <laughs> That's Absolutely. right. That's right. Yeah. So, um, uh, Vinny, did you, did you, uh, were you finished asking? John yeah, yeah. Question? So I'm, I'm, I'm finished with that. I mean, this is a very interesting topic, which I'd like to dive a little bit more, but I'll end up t- spending too much time with it. So I know, I know. It, <laughs> I mean, I, I have another question. This is kind of more less, less specific about what you're doing, John, and more big picture for just Africa in general, you, you know, kind of coming back to the main topic. Africa becoming a tech hub. What sectors of tech are you seeing the biggest growth in Africa right now? What's what sectors are are, are and and maybe out of those 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 growth sectors, is there a is there a sector where Africa is a leader? FinTech. Can you hear me? FinTech. Okay. Fintech. Fintech so, and payments. We are leaders. We're leading the world in terms of how you do switch and, and manage transactions from a place with very little infrastructure. Mm. And wow. That's why I said we're leaders with very little infrastructure. You know, and Oh goodness! I think oh, we lost no. John. opportunity. Some problems that people are beginning to solve and how they think. Okay, hello. Hey, we 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 got you back again, John. Sorry, we 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 lost your connection there for about I don't know, maybe thirty seconds or so. Now uh, we lost him again. Shoot. Yeah, I know. You know, and while we're while we're waiting for John to to get back here on on the line, yeah, I I would in my head before I asked the question, I I was expecting something along the lines of fintech or blockchain for the same for the reasons that he was bringing up, right? Just uh, that it's, it's such an it's such a need, right? I mean, outside of, outside of Africa, I just don't see the same level of uh of demand for innovation and payments. Well, that's you know? because they already have, there's an infrastructure that works, right? Yeah, I'm right. here. Hey, welcome back, Yay. John. Okay. <laughs> no, no, so what I was saying was about, that, uh, I don't know, maybe maybe uh, 90 seconds or so, if you want to. The that. last thing I heard no, you no. say was, was, was FinTech and uh, that Africa really is a leader in FinTech. Yeah, why? You'd ask me, but, you know, it's even our banks, you know, when we first started our alert systems and things like that. I remember living in Europe, and some of the banks in Africa, I started doing alert systems when you get your transfer. And it took my bank in Europe much longer to actually figure that out. Because of the local fraud issues, it took my bank in Europe way longer. It took them forever to actually start doing that. And they thought it was something cool and new. But it wasn't. But then if you look at all the fintech companies in Africa, the way that they've grown exponentially, 
And some of the microtransaction problems and micro switching problems across border, across economies where the infrastructure is so bad that they are doing, that's why I say we're leaders. Not necessarily that in terms of the pure technology we're leading, you know, but what we've been able to do with limited infrastructure. Wow. That's like good. great leadership. You know, Absolutely. so 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 that's one area. Um I really think that we are, we really see an African renaissance in payments and fintech space, uh, which will continue to happen and we will compete with everybody else as well. Um, the other area that we're also seeing is health, because we're beginning to see that uh, Africa is also participating massively in the healthcare space. And, and because we don't have all the regulations, that you guys have in the US for you to do innovative things in healthcare, especially in digital healthcare, uh, I think we will probably leapfrog the world as well faster in that digital healthcare space as well. Not only because... digital, right? It's, it's, huh? big, it's not only digital, it's actually mm -hmm. a fusion of wellness and digital because yes. um, I, I've been speaking to some friends of mine and, and how they actually deal with, with COVID and using inhalants and, and, and all of these sort of stuff, they're actually dealing with it in a different way. If you look at what Africa had to deal with with Ebola and stuff and how they came out of it, there's a lot of lessons to be learned as well. Absolutely. And, you know, so health, because I, 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 I run a health company, a digital health company, you want you see behind Africa record. And what we're doing when we even present what we do to companies in the US, they're like, we can't believe you build this technology here in Africa. You know, and, and the sovereign rights of data side. So healthcare is another space where I think we're winning massively. Uh, and we're gonna continue to win. Uh, but the fintech space is, is it's a big one. It's one, I mean, you've got areas like agritech and other things, but I think fintech is is our, our dominating factor in the continent. At the end of the day, <clears throat> everything ends up being a number. And that the reason for financial technology is no matter what business you're in or what vertical, you still need to pay for it. So right. it actually underpins everything, doesn't it? It does. It totally does. I love it. Now, uh, so, okay. So, so FinTech, healthcare, love it. Yeah. Now, the other big topic that we have, I mean, we keep coming to this in every one of our Biz Talk Africa's video. Africa's huge. Absolutely. It's huge. And there's so many countries and different, different cultural norms, uh, depending on what part of Africa. Yep. My next question for you is what countries or hubs in Africa should people be watching? Where should the Good world question. be watching for, so for going forward? Let's group it. Companies okay. are already showing themselves now as the continental leaders. Kenya, South Africa, Nigeria, Egypt, Ghana. Um, yeah, those, those, you know, those four are showing themselves as leaders. Okay? So, yeah, that, that's where you, I mean, Kenya has just been named the Silicon Republic of Africa, Nairobi as a city, uh, Lagos is pushing hard, Cape Town, Johannesburg, Cairo, you know, Accra. But then I, I, I like the underdog opportunities. So you've got Uganda, uh, you've got Rwanda, you know, you have Senegal, you have the Ivory Coast, there's a number of interesting things happening out there. You're beginning to see, uh, you know, flickers of, of, of life in Zambia. Uh, and, and, and you just begin to see all these flickers happening. And, and you must be able to retro-engineer your mind to see that the new opportunities that is about to explode in all these markets as they also aim to catch up with the Nigeria, the South Africa, the Egypt, the, the Ghana, makes for an exciting ecosystem of competition, but also partnerships that could really transform a borderless African technology space. Wow. Wow. I love it. So my final question, and then I'm sure Vidi has some other thoughts and then we'll, we'll probably wrap it up. But um, if I'm an investor, mm. if I'm an investor outside of Africa, 
and I'm like, hey, I, I want to be, I want to be able to invest in the the rising tech hub that is Africa. Where where should I look first? Because you named a lot of places, but I mean, if we had to narrow it down, I'm an investor. You I'm look, coming you look in. At I want Nigeria, to invest. You look where at do I go? Um, Kenya. You look at South Africa. You look at Ghana. And you probably look at Egypt. Those. Those, those five. Are. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. What about you, awesome. Vidi? What, 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 what do you got? We've, we've got so, like four or five minutes left. So I'll be quick. <laughs> Two minutes. <laughs> so, John. <We'll> see. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, if I, I'm, I'm running a business here in the UK, for example, and I'm like, you know what? There's some really talented people in Africa. How do I connect with them and say, you know what? I want to use some of that talent some of that knowledge, some of the innovation and different ways of looking at things to do some work for me. How do I go about sort of touching into that um, brain power? How do I reach it? Yeah, I think if you, if you look at the labs, uh, which is where then the innovation labs have become interesting. Uh, some of the universities also have innovation hubs as well, uh, where you know, there's a lot of proof of work going on. Um, for example, we have an animation business that we also launched. Yeah, and our goal is to win the Oscars by 2024 with a movie made from Africa. And uh, we had the animation summit yesterday, the first one of its kind. And we've now connected with animation houses in the UK and, univers- and, and people who want to do co-collaboration work. Uh, so all of a sudden, this animation company is taking off very quickly. So again, because we were doing capacity development to train 300 animators. In exactly. So, the universities. So the universities are a good place. Uh, technology labs like ourselves that are very driven on capacity development. And, and we just launched our lab in the UK as well. So out of Africa, we've actually launched a company in the UK. So which means we're now- What is it called? Edelab UK. Edelab UK, okay. It's in Manchester. Right. So yeah, we're bridging the gap. So those are the key places that you must look at. University- Absolutely. Lab like ours, labs that are bridging the gap and also trying to bring that value. And then, you know, there are also individual platforms within the startup ecosystem as well, where not everybody's going to be an entrepreneur, but we have a lot of really other smart young people who can also create value for themselves by, you know, doing full collaboration work or using their talents or to generate revenue. I love it. Fantastic. Love it. Fantastic. So, John, uh, just closing thoughts, Cl- closing thoughts before, before we go for the audience. Um, for me, it's, it's, it, it's a camel journey. Uh, camel. You know, it's a camel journey. It's not a, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon, but also the purpose must be clear. Why are you doing what you're doing as an entrepreneur in Africa? Yes. You know, making money, we will all make money for our investors in every spot. My goal is I would like to transform the lives of young people here. So when I say I want to build 300 companies over the next five years, it's because you really believe that if you do that, you could create jobs for people. And if those companies are only companies that are ever worth 30, 40 million dollars, but they're employing 10, 100 people regularly, then we've been successful. Right. You know, and if some of them become unicorn, then so be it as well. But the goal is to transform this continent with a purpose a purpose that is driven to achieve the foundation and some of the structures that our forefathers laid down before we came. So, so that is my part in charge. We are on a mission. I love it. I'm inspired. I'm oh, so yeah. inspired. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I, I love it. John, thank you so much. I, I really, really appreciate you being here. Um, I would love to, uh, I, I'd love to have a follow-up with you if that, if that's yes. all right, I I'll reach please out do. to you. Yeah, please yeah. reach out and let's connect and let's uh, keep talking. See how Excellent. We can Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you very Wonderful. much for putting me on this great forum. I really, really love it. And uh, keep up the great work as you continue to expose the opportunity to the rest of the world. It's really part of what needs to be done. So if you know we're what? doing stuff, somebody has to help us also share that. We appreciate that. We really appreciate that. Jason and I are humbled by you saying that. Thank you. Absolutely. And I promise we won't stop. 
stop. We won't stop. stop. <laughs> I will look for you if you stop. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Awesome. Well, thanks so Thank much, John. Like I said, I'll, I'll follow up with you. Thank you so much for being here and to our audience. Take care. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Have a good one. Have a great weekend.